Hi, everyone. Welcome to Your Money Matters. I'm Angela Giroux, publisher of The Bauman Letter. And joining me, of course, are Ted Bauman, editor of The Bauman Letter, and Clint Lee, research analyst. Now, real quick, just so you all know, Ted will be making an appearance this Thursday at the Money Show Virtual Expo for accredited investors. If you'd like to check him out, along with 35 other top experts, there is a link below. You can register for free. So might as well give it a shot. Now today, Clint, Ted, we've been talking about how the Fed basically has run out of ammo. Um, there's really no more tricks up its sleeves to prop up the economy, to prop up the stock market, which means sooner or later, reality is going to set in. So Ted, what might that reality look like? Well, uh, it's been a long time since uh, we had to operate in you know realistic conditions, but um, I think the, the critical thing is, you know, we've been talking all week about how important stimulus is actually for the last couple of weeks, how important stimulus is, and so have the markets. I mean, everybody keeps talking about how important stimulus is, right from Jay Powell all the way down to local uh, retail traders, and that's what has driven uh, the markets until, I think, just recently. And I think the big thing that's that's starting to have an effect on markets now is the likelihood of a Democratic sweep of the White House, the Senate, and the House. And fundamentally, forget about you know one's political preferences. I think what Wall Street is looking at is the likelihood of a, a, a Washington that can actually act as opposed to just constantly being uh, in gridlock because of you know split party control. And I think that's what's driving stocks uh, up at the moment. There's a perception that the race is getting to the point now where it's unlikely that the president would be able to contest it successfully using any reasonable means. And so um, what we've seen is that policy has been the main driver of the market this year. And the projections for potential policy next year are the main drivers of the market right now. And I think that there, there are many uh, implications of that. And Clint, I know you have one in mind that uh, could be very surprising to a lot of people. Right. Yeah. And that's uh, that's interest rates. And I, I know we've talked a lot about interest rates before, but you know, we, we haven't really talked about why interest rates matter so much, especially to certain areas of the stock market. So I just want to take an opportunity really quick to talk about how a lot of analysts will use interest rates in their in their financial models. And I'll put up a visual right here to demonstrate this. But uh, a lot of times I'll use something called a discounted cash flow analysis. And all that is, is just projecting what a company is expected to earn into the future. But then you got to, you got to bring those cash flows back to the present and you discount them by an interest rate. Now, a lot of times what will happen is that these analysts will project cash flows out through, you know, five to 10 years out, but then there's this terminal value. And that's just a catch all for everything that's expected to happen in the future. And that, that value can be significantly impacted by just the, the smallest changes in interest rate projections. And it has a, a very large implication, especially for growth stocks, because a lot of growth stocks, especially in the early stages of their life cycle, they're not profitable. You know, they're sacrificing profits to, to grow, to grab market share with the expectation that they monetize that down the road. So that terminal value for growth stocks is incredibly important. So now that we've had that concept, I want to show another chart. And this shows how the S&P 500's done uh, since really 19, or since the start of 2000 uh, up until now, overlaid with 10-year treasury yields. So you can see the blue line is the S&P 500. This red line is 10-year treasury yields. So kind of with that concept in mind of how interest rates can impact the value of, of a firm and how it's reflected in the value of a stock, you see this long-term decline in interest rates, that, that's ongoing decline that we've had, uh, and how that's boosted equity market prices. Uh, but yeah, the, the election, I think, is starting to, to weigh on some people, um, you know, because we're, we're seeing Biden continue to lead in the polls. We're starting to see uh, the chances for uh, Democrats winning the Senate creep up. And so just very near term, this next chart I want to show is just how yields, both the, uh, the 10 year and the 30 year yield are starting to creep up a little bit here recently. Um, you can see since we've bottomed out, we've traded sideways, but, but we're starting to, uh, to rise um, and break out of that range that, that we've had. And once again, because of how all interest rates impact the value of firm profits, uh, that's why this is becoming a, a big concern. And then sort of the, the icing on the cake, so to speak, for uh, growth stocks is just how expensive they become. This is the last chart I wanna show right here. Uh, this shows since 2010, 
uh, the PE ratio for value stocks in red and the PE ratio for growth stocks in blue. And what's interesting is in 2010, they started out about the same level, uh, just below 20. Uh, but since then, now we have growth stocks at trading at over about 40 times earnings versus value stocks still right about that, that level right around 20. And so that heightened valuation multiple makes them that much more susceptible if we do start to see interest rates tick up more meaningfully here. Right. And Ted, these rising yields and policy changes has other effects too. Well, yes. And, and one of them, I think, is the, uh, the perceptions of the, the value uh, of the corporate debt market, because if you start getting reasonable risk-free yields in the federal uh, treasury market, then it makes the corporate market less attractive. So just to illustrate how dangerous that could be, let's look at a chart that shows the level of corporate debt as a, you know, basically as a percentage of GDP over time. Uh, it, it kind of bottomed out in the 90s, rose again, um, got up to very reasonably high levels during the great financial crisis fell and now it has taken off again and now it is over 75 percent of gdp that is corporate debt in other words that's non-financial companies um you know the everyday companies that have just really gorged on debt now here is a chart that shows how much of it they've actually bought this year or issued this year rather um we are now essentially higher than we were in 2012 uh, in terms of the amount of issuance of corporate debt, particularly junk bond. This is the, the very high yielding risky debt for companies that already carry a lot of debt. Um, it's now, we have three months left of the year and it's already higher than it ever has been before. Now, one of the reasons for that, again, is because of the Fed's interventions. And uh, here's a chart that shows the impact of the Fed's intervention. Now that this chart shows spreads on different types of corporate debt. Uh, they rose very rapidly in March when the crisis hit. And then the Fed announced that it was going to uh, have a, a facility that would backstop that. Basically, they said that they would buy debt if necessary. They would buy ETFs that hold corporate debt if necessary. They've actually done very little of that. But nevertheless, it had a big impact on the markets because the markets thought, well, if the Fed is ready to pull out its weapons, then um, we will be able to uh, you know, get our money back one way or the other. This next chart shows the impact and it shows that the uh, the yields on junk debt has basically fallen to lows that obtained before the crisis, even though these companies are definitely more vulnerable than they were before the crisis. Uh, but you can see at the far right hand side, that's starting to tick up. Those yields are starting to tick up. That means that the market is becoming more concerned about corporate debt. And here's why. The next chart shows that from August, uh, the default rate on leverage loans, which are loans uh, that are essentially um, riskier than others, has uh, risen substantially, very substantially. Uh, it, it is now at levels we haven't seen since uh, 2012, 2014, 2015. And here's the final uh, piece, and that is a chart that shows that the index that, that covers high yield debt has seen big outflows. You see the bottom right hand corner, those that, that cluster of lines pointing downwards, that shows people are taking their money out of debt. Now, what that tells me is that there are a lot of companies out there that only exist because they have been able to uh, obtain credit at very low interest rates, thanks to the Fed's jawboning, as they call it. The Fed didn't really have to do anything. It just you know, said we might, if necessary, intervene. And so credit markets bought up all this debt and all these companies issued all this debt. Now, what happens when that disappears? We look at a scenario where um, the debt is, uh, you know, now suddenly riskier, the yields go up, these companies come under big pressure. So again, that's an area that public policy could address, but how will it address it, um, you know, after the election? Right. So what it always comes down to, and Clint, I'll pose this question to you first, is I'm a stock investor and I invest in the stock market. What are the implications here for me? And I think probably for the majority of people watching today. Yeah, well, I think if you're going to see rising interest rates, especially uh, potentially from stimulus, there's really two areas you want to look at. One is cyclical areas that are able to really leverage that stimulus uh, into, into more profits and, and reflecting that through stock gains. So areas like small caps and mid caps. Uh, but then on the valuation side as well, you know, we've talked a lot this week, both Ted and I, uh, in, our, in our commentaries about some of the opportunities in international markets, especially because of how cheap uh, many international markets are relative to, to what we're seeing here in the U.S., especially relative to that, to that growth space. So I think those are, are two great areas right now to pay attention to. Ben? 
Well, I think um, I agree with Clint. I think uh, one of the things also to bear in mind is, as Clint said earlier, that um, if we do see a sustained rise in interest rates, which uh, a lot of people are speculating, uh, speculating about, that will put downward pressure on the, the very top stocks that have done so well this year. So it, there's a pull factor, the international stocks, the uh, cyclicals, but there's also a push factor, people wanting to get away from those. And we'll start to see that soon. For me, the critical thing is uh, balance sheets are going to become a lot more important and companies that cannot demonstrate the ability to withstand uh, ups and downs are not going to be favored by the market. And that means that they're gonna lose share price. Uh, people are gonna start uh, moving away from companies that are perceived to be zombies that can only survive on debt. Um, I think, you, as I predicted before, we're likely to see uh, if there is a democratic sweep and, and this is something everybody agrees. I mean, JP Morgan, D Goldman Sachs, uh, Mark uh, Zandi, all these guys have all said that if you have a unified control of Washington, uh, you will see a big growth in stocks that are related to infrastructure, healthcare, consumers, et cetera. Uh, and that supports our thesis of a rotation into those sectors. So um, a lot hinges on this election, uh, but fundamentally, we're already starting to see the implications of our core thesis here uh, in, in recent action. And so it's confirming what we're saying. All right. So just to back up a little bit, because you mentioned international stocks and it's a perfect segue that will actually be your topic at Money Show on Thursday. So this is a reminder for all of you to sign up, click the link below. And That's right. uh, it's going to be a good one, right, Ted? It sure will. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Have a nice day. Take care. Thanks.